What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And today, you're talking sports with MG Nas. And today, here, ladies and gentlemen, we got an Eagles talk video. But before we get into that, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Hit the subscribe button if you are new to the channel. And hit the post notification bell so you don't miss any sports content, whether it's the Philly sports content or anything else. You don't want to miss it. So be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of that. And before we get into this video as well, ladies and gentlemen, I got to give a slight apology to my Eagles family out there. I haven't been posting too much Eagles content since the end of the season because the Sixers regular season and playoffs ramped up. The Philly season started. So I've been focusing on those two other teams that I kind of, you know, other than that A.J. Brown little reaction video I dropped, I really haven't been giving the Eagles any love on the channel. Obviously, you guys know when it's in season, that's when I really focus on the teams as far as content-wise. But, ladies and gentlemen, obviously, I'm a fan. I see everything. I know everything. And I've seen this amazing offseason we had. So, I'm here to break it all down. Also, too, before we get into today's video and I break everything down, I want to bring back the skits on the channel. So, and I probably will. So, if you guys were will be interested in that, Drop a comment letting me know. I'll probably bring it back either way just to see what you guys would think of it. But that's another announcement. But let's get into today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about this Eagles offseason. The Eagles had an amazing offseason. Um, and this is probably the best offseason that we've seen Howie Roseman have. I mean, let's start with the big news. I mean, you get this signing of or the trade, I'm sorry, of AJ Brown on draft night. You trade away the number 18th overall pick to acquire AJ Brown. You get a guy who's about a top 12 to 15 wide receiver in the NFL, um, and he's a great addition. Put him next to Devontae Smith, and you have yourself a great wide receiving duo. On the same draft night, we also drafted Jordan Davis. We all know the time is running out on Fletcher Cox. Um, he is getting older, and I love Fletcher Cox. I'm a big fan um, of him, and obviously from my whole childhood, he's been a Philadelphia Eagle. So I love Fletcher Cox, but we drafted Jordan Davis, and Jordan Davis will be the next guy up. Jordan Davis is going to be the next guy up. So that's going to be that. Um, also, too, the Eagles, the night after on draft night, drafted N'Kobe Dean, who was a projected first-round talent, who fell to us in the third, had some injury concerns. But he said on draft night when he got drafted that it was all good to go. His injuries are fine. We'll obviously see, you know, when it comes to training camp and actually, you know, the regular season gets here. But he said he's all good. He said the injuries aren't bothering him, so we'll see what happens there. But N'Kobe Dean in the third round, you get arguably the top or second best linebacker in the draft to fall to you that far. I think that's the win in itself. Also draft Cam Jurgens that night, which is, you know, supposed to be the next Jason Kelsey. Also, the uh, another signing we did earlier in the offseason, Hassan Reddick, ladies and gentlemen. Eagles brought Hassan Reddick to the team. Um, brought him here as an edge rusher, defensive end, kind of outside linebacker type role who can do those things. Um, so it's a lot of great signings. And then Howie Rosen capped it off by getting the corner two for this defense and uh, getting James Bradbury, who got released by the New York Giants. The time was just up. Him and the Giants both needed to move on from each other. It kind of wasn't looking like a good fit anymore, especially last season. So let's talk about let's talk about the draft picks first. Jordan Davis, first round pick. As I said, Fletcher Cox is definitely on his way out the door. And I know I said that a few minutes ago, but to go more in depth about the pick, Jordan Davis is the type of guy who in Georgia did have kind of a snap count. Um, he did sit out for certain plays just so he could reserve himself for clutch situations in a game. Um, so you see him in the third quarter on a random second down, might have took a rest for a play. Um, and a lot of people criticize Jordan Davis for that. And I don't criticize him for that because the Eagles run a rotation in the defensive line anyways. Fletcher Cox doesn't play every snap either, even when he was at his peak. The Eagles under Jim Schwartz and Jonathan Gannon always had kind of a rotation where we let our big dogs rest for a player or two. So that way, when it comes to big third downs in the third and fourth quarter, we can get stops. So that's kind of the perfect fit for Jordan Davis because when you're coming into a defense – where they rotate the defensive line from time to time again just for rest purposes. And obviously, they're big guys, so, you know, they need conditioning. They need to catch their breath every other play or every few plays in that aspect. Um, and Jordan Davis coming to a team like that, who's going to have his proper rest, but he's also going to get his proper snaps. And 
He's going to be learning from Fletcher Cox, who is one of the greatest, um, outside of Reggie White, obviously, one of the greatest defensive linemen um, that the Eagles have had, captain of the team for a few years, Super Bowl champion. When you learn it from a guy like that, I think Jordan Davis is in great hands with the Eagles. Then we could talk about the N'Kobe Dean pick as well. And obviously, other than his injury concerns, he was the best middle linebacker in college. Obviously, Devin Lloyd playing that outside and middle linebacker role in college. You could argue him as well. But I believe that Kobe Dean was the top middle linebacker when healthy. Um, did have pec injuries. That is something to look out for, like I said earlier in the video. But when you look at Kobe Dean, he's a guy who you're going to plug in the middle and he's going to be your field general. And you love that. You love that from the Kobe Dean. The Eagles have not had that kind of guy who you can plug in the middle linebacker spot and he can be your field general. He can make smart plays. He can be a leader. I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of Eagles fans love about this uh, draft pick is the leadership you're going to be getting from the Kobe Dean. Um, he holds his players accountable. Obviously, you've seen the national championship, a big play. The next play, his teammate responded very well. And that's what you want in this locker room. You want a young guy, but you want a young guy who can lead. And he has a very mature mentality for him being only, what, like 20 or 21 or 22 years old. To be young and mature and a great football player, I think that's a great pick for the Eagles as long as he stays healthy. Um, he, and him and Jordan Davis reunite. Him and Jordan Davis reunite. The Georgia boys come here to Philadelphia. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, I love the picks. I think they're going to work out very, very well. But we'll see. Next, let's move to some offseason signings slash trades. Let's start off with the Hassan Reddick signing. Um, let's go more in-depth to that. The Eagles, I think, got a great a deal done for the right player at the right position. When you look at edge rusher slash outside linebacker, um, also we signed because you're white who can play outside linebacker, but when you look at the Hassan Reddick signing, I mean, like I said earlier, the Eagles can rotate their defensive line the Eagles will rotate the defensive line, and it's because we have the personnel to do so. You got Josh Sweat. Josh Sweat can make plays here and there. You got Derek Barnett, who, you know, doesn't make plays often, but he does play with an aggressive and great mentality. You got Brandon Graham, obviously, coming off that Achilles injury, who can play the edge as well. So you got a lot of flexibility. If you add Hassan Reddick to that, who can really rush the passer very, very well. I mean, the guy had about, what, double digit sacks over the last two seasons. That is what you want. A guy who understands the system, a guy who's going to come in, who's going to be rushing the passer, he's going to disrupt the defense. I actually made some great sacks against Jalen Hurts in the Eagles last season when we went and visited Carolina for week five. Um, so Hassan Reddick, he can make plays. Um, he's getting better and better as a run stopper as his career moves on, which is very, very key to him maximizing his talent here in Philadelphia. I can't wait to see Hassan Reddick make plays, whether it's rushing the quarterback, whether it's getting stops in a run game, setting the edge in a run game. You know, I can't see, I can't wait to see Hassan Reddick make plays because I truly believe the Eagles ha had a home run signing. Um, we did this earlier free agency, and I love it. Let's move on to the other free agent signing that happened more recent, and James Bradbury. Bradbury, um, what I like about James Bradbury is that, you know, he's not a great number one corner he's not going to be your best corner and i know he did have that great season with the giants but he is always consistently at least a good number two corner and when you got darius slay coming off a of pro bowl season now me personally the age of darius slay does concern me because not a lot of corners and this is respect to darius slay when i say this a lot of corners as they get older start to decline and start to move to that number two corner role big darius slay has been amazing, has stayed as a consistent number one lockdown corner with the Eagles, obviously made the Pro Bowl, still a great playmaker. Obviously, what he can do when he gets the interceptions, what he can do when he picks up fumbles is actually great. I mean, one of the fastest and more athletic def, uh, corners we have in this league. Um, it's a great signing for Darius Slay because when you look at a guy in James Bradbury who can be that number two for him, sometimes take the pressure off of Darius Slay Obviously, you know, that's kind of hard to, harder to do as a cornerback, but you, you, get, you get what I'm saying. Like, not all the pressure is going to be on Darius Slate to have to go guard this guy. And then if this guy's starting to go off against us, then you switch Darius Slate to that guy. You kind of have a set defense now with Avante Maddox running the slot. This James Bradbury sign was really good, man. It was really good. And I think Eagles fans love it because now we feel like we have consistent corners. Obviously, the safety room is a little bit of a question right now. Because Marcus Epps is a little unproven, although I think he'll have a good year. 
I think the Bradbury signing kind of helps our secondary a lot. You know, it helps our safety room a lot. Uh, they have good, consistent corners in front of them. Um, and I think it's just overall great for the team. And, the, I mean, the Eagles went all out on defense this offseason. I mean, you talk about four of the five uh, positions I just talked about or I just named was defensive players. In the fifth position, now we're going to go to the offense. We obviously got to talk about A.J. Brown, who was the big money in the bank cash money deal of the offseason. Howie Roseman, I took my hat off when he did this deal. I took my hat off when he made this deal. Um, obviously, it was known that A.J. Brown was having the contract negotiations here or there over in Tennessee. Obviously, they didn't go well, and he ultimately had to be traded if he wanted to get the money he wanted. Tennessee didn't feel like they wanted to pay him exactly what he wanted. They wanted to offer him a little bit less. He didn't want it. Tennessee said, we're not going to pay you. We're going to trade you away. Now, before I talk about the A.J. Brown deal, I want to also put this in your guys' head as you guys listen to what I'm going to say about A.J. Brown and that deal. The Eagles were all originally going to trade for Calvin Ridley, but right before the deal was official, Calvin Ridley got suspended for what he did for illegal sports betting. So obviously the Falcons said, well, obviously you guys are not going to want to make this deal. Howie said, well, I guess we have no deal. Obviously that happened. So when A.J. Brown kind of popped up, I feel like, and obviously I wasn't there. I wasn't in those talks. I wasn't having those phone calls. Obviously, I'm just a fan. But Howie Roseman, in my opinion, after failing to get the Calvin Ridley stuff done, when he seen that A.J. Brown was available, I know for him that had to just excite him. And I know he got straight on the phone. And he made the deal happen on draft night. He did the deal. And A.J. Brown, you talk about a guy who's going to be consistent pro bowler, consistent 1,000-yard receiver. And honestly, you could have asked for a better situation if you are Jalen Hurts in a situation because you got Devontae Smith, who you had a brief playing time with in college. You have A.J. Brown, who you are the best of friends with. A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts are, are so close, and I didn't even know this until the trade happened. Before A.J. Brown even came to the Eagles, they were so close as friends already. A.J. Brown, a few weeks before, invited Jalen Hurts to his kid's birthday party. Now, obviously, some of you may know, you don't just invite any old player, any old, like, co-worker. Or you don't invite any old person or somebody you know because of football. You don't invite everybody to your kid's party. That's a family and kind of close friends thing, right? And you maybe have a couple people. But when Jalen Hurts was invited to A.J. Brown's party, I actually heard about it a couple weeks before the trade, and I didn't think nothing of it, so I forgot about it. And then it re-reminded me when the trade happened. Like, these guys were already close. And the chemistry that's already going to be there, they say that they're on the same page. They work out every offseason. So what Jalen Hurts is going to be able to do with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith should be great. Obviously, the ball's in the court of Jalen Hurts because he obviously has to, you know, get better, become a more consistent passer of the football. But I do believe that this is set up for Jalen Hurts to succeed this season. And that's why I'm making this video because the Eagles had an amazing offseason. I wanted to talk about it with you guys. I'm not going to give any record predictions, obviously, yet. Obviously, we got to see. I want to see training camp. I want to catch some preseason games. Obviously, you want to just get the energy and the vibe of the team. It seems great right now, but I'm not going to give any rep record prediction right this second. But I just wanted to talk about how great the Eagles offseason is. And ultimately, after all that being said, man, Jalen Hurts has zero excuses. Has zero excuses. Zero excuses to not be a good quarterback this year. Has zero excuses um, as far as, as, as of right now to not be a consistent passer of the football. He has zero excuses. And I love that because I know Jalen Hurts is going to rise to the challenge because I know he has the mentality. I just want to see it on the field for all 17 games of the year. I believe he'll give it to us. I want to see it first, though. Shout out to everyone for watching this video, man. It's been great talking Eagles football. I hope to do this at least once a week. And then we're going to start getting some Eagles talk live streams going as we get in a consistent schedule of just dropping Eagles content again. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more, drop that in the comment section. Hit the like and subscribe button. Appreciate y'all for rocking with me. And ladies and gentlemen, until next time, you've been talking sports on MG Nice. And until next time, I'm out. Peace.